Welcome to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I am Jordan DeLuga. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, September 5th. Jaguars at Dolphins preview. We're going to get into it right now. I have been waiting forever to do a Jaguars regular season game preview. It has been a very long time. Uh, obviously, the NFL is it's a year-round business. It's a year-round sport. We got the draft and free agency and... OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason, but this is the main event. Regular season getting popped off and then the playoffs, obviously. Week one of the regular season. Kicks off tonight. Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens. You got football in Brazil tomorrow night. Eagles and Packers. A loaded slate on Sunday. Monday night football as well. Obviously a little college football on Saturday. I am fired the heck up for it. Really appreciate y'all being here. Let's dive into this matchup, shall we? So, Jaguars at Dolphins, Sunday in Miami, 1 p.m., CBS. Kevin Harlan and Trent Green on the call. Melanie Collins on the sideline. The Dolphins, they are three-and-a-half-point home favorites. It was three pretty much most places. Now it's moved to three-and-a-half, so maybe a little money going towards the Dolphins. Uh, The Jaguars potentially taking on Jalen Ramsey. Calais Campbell is also there. Calais Campbell, who played for Jaguars defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen last year, two members of that 2017 AFC title game run. Miles Jack wasn't down. Injury is not a major factor for the Jaguars. Daniel Thomas is the only player on the injury report right now. Uh, Obviously, Andrew Wingard and Keelan Robinson on the short-term IR. Um, The Dolphins, they do not have Edge Bradley Chubb. Wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr., offensive lineman, Isaiah Wynn, cornerback, Cam Smith. There's a few other guys that are limited, potentially. Uh, Cornerback, Jalen Ramsey, who I just mentioned. Jaguars' former first-round pick did not practice Wednesday with a hamstring issue. So injuries are a little bit of a factor in this game for the Miami Dolphins. No doubt about it. Like You want to have Bradley Chubb out there. They signed OBJ. They want him out there as well. Obviously, they have other receivers. They have other edge rushers as well. Isaiah Wynn, they want it out there. And Jalen Ramsey, we're going to have to monitor that situation throughout the week, whether he's going to play in this one or not. I do think when you look at these two ball clubs internally, they feel the same way about themselves. Like These are two teams that feel like they are pushing for the playoffs, pushing to win their division, and pushing for a title. I think that that's... Internally, you know, regardless of what external expectations are for the Jaguars and Dolphins, both of these teams look at themselves as as contenders. And so I think that's a great week one matchup for both sides. Um, Looking at the Jaguars defense versus the Dolphins offense, Mike McDaniel, he is one of the best there is from an offensive play calling standpoint, offensive design, play calling. Uh, He has elite speed at his disposal. Not only at the wide receiver position, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, um, Malik Washington is a player to watch for them. Rookie out of Virginia who I absolutely loved in the draft. He's a short king, but he fits the bill in Miami, no no doubt about it. Um, Speed in the backfield, it's incredible. Devon A. Chain, Raheem Mostert, Jalen Wright they added in the draft this year. And Mike McDaniel does such a good job of creating space and getting blockers out in front for his runners. And that's a difficult, difficult task for the Jaguars to handle defensively. Um, They also have a ton of pre-snap movement. They will have guys in motion at the snap, before the snap. Have guys moving all over the place. Um, It's going to be tough. On the other side, Ryan Nielsen, Jaguars' new defensive coordinator, Does he have the kryptonite? Does he have the recipe to slow down this offense, this Miami Dolphins offense? We've seen how it can be done, certainly. You have to throw off to his timing just a bit, and you can make this group look a little more human. You're not going to stop them completely, but you can slow them down if you can throw off to his timing. And uh, you got to be physical. You got to be disciplined. You got to be smart. You got to trust your eyes. It's a lot. It is a lot to deal with, this Miami Dolphins offense. No question about it. Josh Hines-Allen said it, though. 
you win first and second down, stopping the run, which again, easier said than done, and you make Tua hold on to the football a little bit. Um, how can they do that schematically? For one, you have to be up at the line of scrimmage challenging these receivers to throw off timing, which you have to be, you can't be scared doing that. You can't be scared of the speed doing that. Um, you got to be confident. You've got to change the picture post snap. You've got to throw tendency breakers out there. Um, Ryan Nielsen's going to have to be in charge of all this and be on the money uh, for this to work out here. We know what they have to do. Can they do it? What we've seen from Ryan Nielsen's defenses so far throughout his coaching career, I mean, the answer is probably, yeah, as long as the, these players can go out there and execute. Um, third down, red zone, Ryan Nielsen has been fantastic. Muddy the picture for Tua. Can't have coverage busts. Can't If you do get beat one-on-one, that's one thing, right? It's going to happen. But don't make the mental mistakes. Don't give them free access. Don't have Tyree Kill running by himself down the field because of a mental mistake. If they beat you physically from a you know speed standpoint, schematic standpoint, it is what it is. But this team down the stretch last year, one of their biggest issues beyond injuries was defensive coverage busts. Has Ryan Nielsen corrected that issue? We're going to find out on Sunday. Again, it's easier said than done to slow down the Miami Dolphins. The speed, the pre-snap movement, the movement at the snap, Mike McDaniel scheming it up in the passing game and the running game, Tua anticipating windows, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and these running backs running all over the place. It's tough. Now, one aspect of this game, not a lot of folks I've seen talking about, the Dolphins' offensive line does have a lot of new pieces as well. How does that look? Right? Robert Hunt went and got paid. Connor Williams is gone. Those are two of your best players on the interior. Isaiah Wynn is not healthy right now. So that'll be a factor. Uh, When you look at the Jaguars' offense versus the Dolphins' defense, the Dolphins have a new defensive coordinator coming over from Baltimore, Anthony Weaver. Listening to him talk, I mean, he gets you fired up. Very eloquent, tough. uh, Seems like a guy that just gets it. And that's what you would expect from someone coming from a, a Baltimore Ravens defense. But you don't really know what to expect, like, The Ravens were very multiple in the way they deployed their defense last year with uh, Mike McDonald, who's now the head coach in Seattle. Is is that going to be what they're trying to do here? You don't exactly know. You don't know. You haven't seen it yet. But they are down Bradley Chubb. We talked about that. Andrew Van Ginkle is gone. He's up in Minnesota. He's a very good designated pass rush type. Christian Wilkins is gone. Jerome Baker, gone couple other guys as well. So it's not the same defense you saw last year. They feel good about where they're at, certainly. Calais Campbell added to the mix. Uh, you brought in Jordan Brooks from Seattle. He's certainly a very good athlete, a guy who is a interesting player, an interesting fit for them, how, that, how he's going to be deployed at linebacker. Chop Robinson, drafted in the first round by the Miami Dolphins, edge rusher, incredible speed. Um, but again, with Bradley Chubb not playing, Jalen Phillips just getting back from the Achilles, he will be on a snap count, according to Mike McDaniel. I do think they have the pieces to play run defense and to cover. Do they have the pieces right now to, you know, kind of wreak havoc in the backfield um, from a pass rush standpoint? I'm not sure. And so, like, can they heat Trevor Lawrence up at all? If they can't, it might be a long day for their defense. Because if you give Trevor Lawrence time, he's going to find his guys. We'll see. I think that's the big question here between the Jaguars' offense and the Miami Dolphins' defense. Also, from the Jaguars' perspective, like, is their run blocking actually improved? They spent all offseason, all training camp, trying to fix the issue that was their running run blocking last year. They're in a three-point stance more, hand in the dirt. Offensive linemen are. Um, it's going to be interesting. It really is. Will they get ET in the ball in space? Will they be able to get Tank Bigsby going at, at all as a more of a inside the tackles runner? Can the Jaguars wide receivers, two new starting outside wide receivers in 2024, can they win one-on-one outside? I have no doubts about 
what Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram bring to the back, the the, the receiving position, uh, what Travis Etienne can do out of the backfield. But you need Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. to make you some plays too. I think they absolutely can. But will they in this game? That's going to be a big factor too. Uh, special teams, I think they're pretty even. Both teams have very good special teams units. It is Cam Little's first big test, you know, um, in a game that matters. I thought he did fantastic throughout training camp in the preseason. But it's his first real test here. Week one. Unscouted looks are going to be huge in this matchup. How teams handle on both sides of the ball, unscouted looks, it's going to be huge. Like, on either side, are you able to absolutely flabbergast the opponent on a look and score a touchdown or pick up a chunk play? Are you able to do that multiple times? Or defensively, are you able to uh, show something you haven't shown before? The quarterback's not ready for it. The offense isn't ready for it. You're able to force a turnover. Like These types of things, I think they pop up more in week one than they do any other time throughout the season because the, these Coaches have had all offseason to figure new things out, get new things into their scheme. And so you're going to have unscouted looks, and those are going to be tough. And whoever responds best to those, whichever team responds best to those, could be the victor in this game. I will leave leave you all with this because it seems like the Dolphins are, you know, they're three and a half point favorites in Vegas, but it seems like pretty much everybody's leaning towards the Dolphins. Uh, from a general public standpoint to a media standpoint, I'm seeing the Dolphins a lot. The Dolphins were 1-6 in 2023 against teams with a winning record, including the playoffs. What does that mean? I don't think it means the Jaguars are just going to run away with this one at all. Um, I don't think it guarantees the Jaguars are going to win. Again, the only team that they beat the Dolphins last year that did have a winning record was the Dallas Cowboys, 22-20. to 20. Um, And the Cowboys have their own issues, obviously. But it does mean that if the Jaguars are the team they believe they are, if Ryan Nielsen is a big upgrade to this defense, if this offense is, is ready to get back on track at full health, it means that this should be a competitive game at the very least, that the Jaguars should be in till the very end, uh, in my opinion, right? This is not the type of game that the Jaguars are playing against a team that it has the power of like the Chiefs or, or the 49ers. If they are the football team they believe they are, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they should be in this game till the very end. They absolutely should be. Um, it shouldn't be the Dolphins running away with it. Now, if this defense isn't ready to perform, if the running game still can't get going, if if the new receivers take a little bit of, of time to kind of get their feet wet in this offense, the Dolphins could, could smack you in the mouth. Because if you are not prepared to play the Miami Dolphins, they can torch you. And you saw that last year. But if the Jaguars are the team they believe they are, this should be a very close football game. We will have bold predictions, keys to victory, matchups to watch, all coming later this week. Fired up to get into all of it. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. Got a lot of other fun stuff on the site. Again, that's ginjag.com slash shop. You can become a channel member here on YouTube, help support what we're doing, get access to some cool perks, including discounts over at ginjag.com. So you can check that out here on YouTube. Links to everything in the description below. Y'all have a good one.